everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Unfiltered, Unfiltered Love Podcast. 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 Wow. <laughs> That's great. Yay. Well, it's nice to be back in the corner of my garage with oh, you. It is so nice. It's a little warm in here. Sorry I didn't have the AC running before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forgive you. It's just all good. a little bit. It's all good. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I completely forgive you. I feel like I just lied and now I feel guilty about lying. Oh, about you don't the forgiveness. Forgive me. Yeah, it's, it's warm. really hot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's okay. The, you know, relationships are all about figuring out forgiveness and uh, I'll, I'll make you dinner and then we'll be good. Yes, I'm hungry. Food sounds great. But before that, we have a uh, relatively cereal episode. Super cereal. Thinking about food. Cereal sounds great, too. Uh, I would eat anything. I'm so Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, my God, me, too. We're both Cinnamon Toast Crunch people? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, you're down with the CTC? (laughs) Down with the CTC. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's Um, cool. Yeah, this is going to be a... (sighs) Heart wrenching episode. Oh no! We got a video submit, a video question submitted on Patreon, patreoncom slash and David, and this particular question was really just emotional. I felt sad. I kind of teared up a little bit listening to it for the first time. So hopefully, I can keep myself together listening, it, you know, to it again. Um, but I don't know. How did you feel? I, I felt the same way. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to share this with you guys. It's it's beautiful what we what we have going on here. Um, to be able to have people share their hearts with us and us pretend that we are professional relationship experts. We are so not qualified, we are not you guys. Qualified. We are not qualified. No, but we will give advice to the best of our abilities. Yeah. So before we do that, uh, we are going to be reading some reviews. reviews. Yeah, da, 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 da. we don't really need musical segments. Why don't we have any of those? Reviews. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you didn't know, you can actually rate and review this podcast on all of the podcast streaming services. So we are going to be rewarding those that actually go and leave a review. And this is from the podcast app? This is on, yes, Apple's podcast app. Nice. Next time, maybe maybe soon, we'll go look at Google Play and we'll all see right. what we got on over there. But Where for now... Let's go on over to the Apple Podcast. I apps. shall pour the wine as you read the reviews. All right. So, this first one is wait. There we go. This first one is from Lil Wedgie, ten forty two. You know uh, that my my Lil Wedgie in the house. What was your like childhood email or AOL screen name? What was yours? Oh my god, I was Go TC Chick at Game Gmail. of Thrones. No, Go Go, oh. go TC. Because I, oh, I was a cheerleader for Tampa Catholic High School, so I'd be like, go TC all the time. So I decided to make it go TC chick, but everyone thought it was like, got C chick. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, but that was my really highly embarrassing screen name. Yay, cheerleading. Lil Dave 36. Lil Dave. Lil Dave. I mean, I guess that's almost as cool as Lil Wedgie. Yeah, Lil Wedgie 1042. I Anyways. feel like Lil Wedgie is about to drop an EP, and I want to hear it. Uh, you think it's gonna crack the top forty? Oh, All right, never mind. oh! All right, um, that, that was, was a good. Wedgie joke. That was good. Yeah. That was okay. good. <laughs> Best podcast is the subject line. It's all so relatable. I love listening to you guys because it makes me feel like I'm not alone and helps me deal with my past and move on. Plus, you are funny to listen to just to get a good laugh. You two are also so cool and cute together. So cute. That <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah, thank you, little wedgie. Okay, so for this next review, I saw, it, I noticed that, that, you know, most of our reviews are five stars. That's great. Thank you. I'm not encouraging anything other than five stars. This is a five-star podcast. Damn it. Oh, wow. The rage is strong. Anyways, I'm going to be reading a four-star review This right is actually now. David at his most angry. This is the most angry you've ever this seen. This is him, like, That's full rage full mode. full rage mode yeah. right here. Okay, so here's a four-star review. From Adrian, E I D R. Don't you, I swear to God, if you go on and you just keep the five star reviews coming. Adrian says, subject line, one more for five stars. It's a really good podcast, but it would be cool if in another episode you could talk about the relationship problems you have had and emotional and how you fix them. And emotional. And emotional. And how you fixed them. Okay, well, I was cheated on many times. How in the f- you gonna fix that? 
You don't fix that shit. You leave that shit. I'm pretty sure we do talk about the relationship. Yeah, I was gonna say like had. that is most of our conversation on here. I feel like I know we could have had one this more. This is talk. like we had like a long distance conversation. We had a conversation about uncomfortable sexual things. We've talked about a lot of things yeah, and tried well, to relate. We got so close. At just an eighty percent. We got we got a B minus from Adrian because we don't talk about it. Re- Anyways, B minus is basically enough. Here's your wine. I will hand it to you over the expensive equipment. Ah, nice. Cheers. 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 Nice. Well. Thank you for the reviews, guys. I do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Very, it's very cool. So uh, we're going to be, t- today's episode, as she said, is based around a Patreon question. If you didn't know, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Jacqueline and David, that helps us do awesome stuff like this podcast. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be taking a video question, which is a very cool feature we have that people who are patrons can mm-hmm. can provide us with a video question and uh which by the way i do recognize the difficulty in doing that it's definitely like difficult to even submit a question at all much less put your face to it so props to this guy yeah no i'm i'm very 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 impressed um all right well let's hear what he has to say all right i will let you do the honors i will push play Hey, Jacqueline and Dave, this is Ethan. I'm from Colorado. I'm going to try to keep this short. First of all, I want to say that he tweeted at me today, and he's like, I just realized I called David Dave. (gasps) Oh, yeah. So he did call himself out on that one. Nice. (laughs) But no worries. Someday. I will go by Dave someday. No. But it's a lot of backstory they have to cover, so yeah. I'm in love with my best friend. Mm. We've known each other since high school. Um, him and I had worked together for a while. And one of the nights after work, he came over to my apartment and we were playing something on my bed and we ended up cuddling. Um, him and I spent the entire night in each other's arms. It was one of the happiest moments I'd experienced in a long time since I suffer from severe night anxiety and panic attacks, and he helped me not feel that for once. Um, The next morning, he tells me that that night he thought he might want a relationship with me and that he didn't want to be anywhere else in that moment, but he's straight and he doesn't want a relationship. Okay, I think this is a good time to pause. I am confused. Because if his best friend is straight, why would he say that he wants to be with him? And that he didn't want to be anywhere else other than in his arms. To me, that just doesn't seem like something that one would say if there wasn't interest. Correct. Yeah. Um, I think. I think uh, I think we need. I don't. I I I know that I've I've watched this already, so I know there's more information that that we will learn. I'm not trying to spoil. But I it. do want to pause it at this point mm-hmm. because it's a uh, you know we're one minute into a three minute video. Yeah. And this is an important thing for people to remember that this happened, and that there was this feeling, and that it was reciprocated. Yeah. You know, he said he didn't want a moment. he didn't want a relationship, but there was interest there clearly. But he said he was straight. So I don't know. Like, I I personally feel like maybe his friend is figuring things out for himself still mm-hmm. and doesn't fully understand what he exactly wants or he's fearful to admit maybe what he wants or he just doesn't know yet. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of confusion there. And I feel bad for him, for our wonderful friend here who sent us a question, because I feel like now he's almost being led on. A little bit like could you imagine like let's just say let's just take the uncomfortableness of his situation out of it let's say they weren't friends you know let's say that it was you know a guy and a girl could you imagine like us cuddling and like spending a night in each other's arms and then me being like but i'm not actually interested in you at all would that not be like me completely leading you on you yes yes it would and it wouldn't that be kind of messed up of me i feel like yeah so I don't know. Like we, I'll, I'll keep playing this video, mm-hmm. but I just want to pause at this moment. Yeah, that's powerful information. Because this, that they this shared. to me was like a key part of the video. Mm-hmm. All right. 
and we continue. Um, now he has a girlfriend. Um, we talked about it a few other times after that, but I mean, obviously I don't want to pursue anything further since I don't want my own James Charles moment type thing, <laughs> and I want to respect him. Um, okay, I just want to pause again because I think that's really sweet that he wants to respect his friend's relationship. Yeah. Even though it's probably really painful for him. And I appreciate the James Charles joke. Yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a good time. Uh, if you don't know, James Charles was allegedly trying to convert mm -hmm. uh, straight guys, and that was his preference. Uh, that was all, preference. Like, apparently not true, though. Yeah, I... I it not... was all a very, very serious accusation that wasn't really backed by any evidence at all. Yep. Um... But that, I thought, was, was interesting um, that this guy, he said, I guess previously he did not want a relationship. But he has a girlfriend, so he wants a relationship, just not with him. So I, I wonder if this, and he didn't give us this information, I wonder if this moment of them cuddling, was that while this guy had a girlfriend or before? Wow. You think it was during? I think it was. I think it was. That's what it sounded like. Hmm. Unless, unless I missed something. I, but that's what I thought. That's how I interpreted it. I could be wrong. I. So you think they were having this like moment together, and the guy was like, "No, I can't. I have a girlfriend." I'm or straight. I'm right. straight. Mm. You know, you're. He's maybe potentially See, using. I'm so con. Yeah, maybe using the girlfriend as his. Ex not an excuse. It, but, it is a thing that happens. It is very common for people who are unwilling to accept their sexuality totally. for whatever reason to have a partner of a you know a, a gender that is not exactly what they want but they're afraid to go for what they want that is a very common thing but at the same time like i'm afraid to say the wrong thing right now because i do i mean i have heard of people that cuddle that are just friends that cuddle yeah i don't get it because i like my personal space like i don't like sitting too close to someone that i'm not you know dating like obviously i have no personal space boundaries with you but i don't want anyone else That's in my so like true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't want anyone else in my bubble like i have my personal space i don't want anyone to invade my personal space yeah you know even like god i, I feel like i'm gonna sound like a dick right now but even like whenever i see friends or family and they want to like hug me and i'm just like i don't like, I don't know. Like, I just have, like, a weird thing. I don't really enjoy being... I've always been like that ever since I was a kid. Yeah, So, but there are probably people out there that but the cuddling I, is totally normal. But that's what, I, that's so what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to trying there, to just play by ear. I have heard people say, oh, yeah, I cuddle with my friends all the time. And I'm like, that's, to me, like, that's just so foreign. But he felt it, so like, foreign. his romantic, like, that was, like, the night. That was, like, the, the night for him that he felt, you know, his anxiety. He, like, cuddle in someone's arms all night. Like, that's not a thing you just do. Is it? Maybe. God, am I Am I completely out of it? For, I, am I crazy? I agree with you. <laughs> like, but, but we also that... don't know about the general public. So, you know, once again, we're not qualified. But in this situation, I, I'm with you on it. I, I think I that don't... it was romantic. Yeah. I think it was a beautiful moment. And I think there's no way that both of them didn't feel it by this description. I think you're right. I agree. But being around him, being around his girlfriend, it just hurts now. Um, I feel terrible that it hurts me. So I want to be happy for him, and I do am happy for him. It just hurts. Because he was one of the only people I could open up to. Um, I loved him. I don't open up to a lot of people, and I don't fall in love with a lot of people. I think he was the only person I ever felt actual love for because um, I could actually talk to him about the dark things that I experience. And my question is, should I try and still be friends with him? Because all being around him does is hurt now. All right. What do you think? Uh, I'm so heartbroken. I That's know. so hard. Like, just that moment, though, him even filming this. You can see he was holding back tears. Yeah, that's like a really, like, real 
feeling. So this guy, you know, his friend, he's, you know, he loves his friend. It's a beautiful yeah. relationship that they have. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's hard to be around him. I, I get it. Like, <sighs> I would. But the value kinda... in a friend is so important. See, it's interesting because we had this conversation after the first time we watched this video mm -hmm. and your reaction was very different than mine. Yeah, and and even though I totally think your reaction was absolutely better and I totally <laughs> now agree no. with your reaction, you my can... initial reaction was that the friendship is is something to preserve and that you can have a beautiful thing that you cultivate and you can... I know, I know, I see you, I know how you are, um, and you're right. My initial reaction I don't agree with anymore, but but just playing it out, I was I was thinking that he should suggest he should respect that his friend has this relationship and he should hold back these feelings, and he should cultivate the the friendship. Um, yeah, no, I disagree with my first. <gasps> I disagree with my gut. No, no, no. You don't have to disagree because I feel like I semi debated you on this earlier. Yeah, yeah you kicked my ass. No, and I wasn't. I trying can't debate to, you on anything. No, ever. I wasn't trying to debate you necessarily. I just didn't agree with that. And you can. It's okay to have a different opinion on this. I'm sure people listening are gonna have conflicting opinions as well. You know, because this isn't, it's not an easy question. There's no. not a clear right answer. No. And it's so real and it's so raw. And, and there's so, also so much intricacy to their relationship and uh, probably what we don't understand because it's not, remember, they talked about the cuddling night multiple times. Mm -hmm. That was something he referenced. So I do think there's probably more information we don't have as far as like if the friend did really truly say like that was amazing Mm -hmm. But or like I want to have a relationship, but I have a girlfriend, so we don't know. You know, there's there's so much struggle with the definition well, here. He didn't even say that that he wants a relationship, but he has a girlfriend. He goes, "I'm straight." Yep. So it was an immediate like reference to his sexuality and not his feelings, and not that he's unavailable because he's in a relationship. It was that I'm straight. That was like an immediate denial because of. Him, I, I guess he didn't want to even allow the thought of being attracted. Yeah. To a man. We're still. And in I a feel bad. Very heteronormative thing. Yeah, and, and it's it's different because you know we're in California, mm -hmm. and it seems so normal. And I personally have never been able to wrap my head around it, but that doesn't mean that it's not still a real thing that a lot of people struggle with. Oh yeah, and, and generationally, families, you know, yeah. you know, religion, all of that. That's it's. It's, it's still not accepted. It's got to be so painful for him. And and his friend. Like, I mean, I am taking the position that his friend is leading him on. Yeah. Is not taking his feelings into consideration. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that is not okay. It's but a I, little disrespectful. But at the same time, internally, I'm sure he's having a war in his head. So I feel for his friend as well. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I it's it's got to be very confusing for the both of them. But uh, I feel like this is going to reference our trailer to this podcast saying how you have had different experiences than me. And because of that, your advice is a lot more friendly and lenient. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That, that I my initial response was cultivate the friendship. Uh, relationships come and go. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and, but the friendships can can last longer and the friendships can develop into something more. And maybe, and maybe you're right, but... But this current situation he's in is wrecking him. I have been so many times screwed over by people who didn't consider my feelings and they were very selfish and they did what they wanted regardless of how it would affect me. And I feel like this is something that he's experiencing because his friend is not considering his feelings. His friend is not thinking about how th now after this moment, he's going to have to watch his friend with this with his girlfriend and it's going to torture him. Like, what does he expect that's going to happen at this point? You know how, how like in my opinion, I I'm <laughs> I want to fight for. I want to fight for him and be like, how dare you lead him on? How dare you put him in this situation and then make him watch you go off with your girlfriend? You know? 
But at the same time, I get it. He's probably struggling too. So he asked a question. What, is, <sighs> what does he do? What does he do in this situation, being that torn up? He can't be around them. He's, he's clearly choked up. Well, I say we answer that after we oh, wow. a quick break. A quick break. Jacqueline. Yes, David. Why are you crying? It's just that a podcast. No, not the podcast. You see, I didn't want to believe it at first, but I don't think we're getting enough ratings and reviews to go on. No, but they're streaming on Tuesdays and watching on Thursdays, but not reviewing. Yes, my love. <clears throat> I'm so scared right now. Oh my god, it's getting worse. If only more people would go to Spotify and the podcast app and leave a review, maybe they could save us all. Before it's too late. Subscribe and review. Subscribe and review. And we are back. We are back. Wow, that was such a nice break. It was so nice. I love it. Wow. All right, so shall we dive back into Ethan's amazing question? All right. um, This is real. This is human. Who wants to go first? You want to rock, paper, scissors? Uh, have we ever? We have. This would you be ever. our first rock. You know, I'm going to kick your ass. We'll see. You might. Remember when you challenged me to arm wrestling the first night? Okay, so I challenged David to arm wrestling before we were, like, officially dating, before we had even kissed. Correct. I didn't know you liked me. We stayed up very late. Mm-hmm. It was probably, like, 6 a.m. The sun was coming up. Yeah. Uh, and and you challenged... We were drunk. And Very you dumb. challenged me to arm wrestle confidently, I, might I add. Mm-hmm. Very confidently. Mm-hmm. And I, I work out. But I, a little part of me, was actually scared that she, you were going to kick my ass. But the I, way you told me, let's arm wrestle. I wanted to hold your hand. Well. And I got what I wanted, damn it. You did. Physical contact. No, I didn't really because I wanted you to kiss me and you didn't. No, I did not. Mm-hmm. But I sure as hell didn't let you win. <laughs> Are you proud? Yeah, I'm so proud. Yeah. No, I got worried. I thought you were going to kick my ass. Um, so rock, paper, scissors me. Okay, so Unless you're we're going to go on, we're going to throw rock, on paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, no. you want to go on shoot? Yeah. Ready? Okay. One, one. That's fine. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, I won. Oh I God. kicked I can't believe you beat me. Ass. I can't. Best of three. <laughs> best of three. Best of three. Best of three. Best of three. No, I win. All right, I win. Fine. I win. I did paper. Wow, he I did can't, rock. I can't believe you I know. I almost did scissors. I almost. Did I scissors. knew you were gonna do scissors. That's why. Ha! Huh. And I knew you knew I was gonna do scissors, so I did paper. But I knew that you knew that I knew that you were gonna <laughs> do scissors, so I thought you were gonna do paper. So so that yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> win. So that means I get to choose, and I think you should answer first. Oh, that's so stupid. I don't even remember what the question was anymore. Should he stay friends? <sighs> After having no, don't let my don't let you're my you're right. Don't you let my response so right. manipulate your response. I want you to have your own response. I have my own response. Okay. The relationship's important to him. It's really important that he communicates. In my my opinion, Ethan, it's important that you tell your friend how much your friend means to you. But I don't think that you should suffer, and I don't think that you should be around your friend. Um, you have such an incredible analysis of this. Mm-hmm. But but in this, I, I just truly believe that for well, your own... I relate to it a little bit. I mean, I rela- relate... The only place where I relate was that I was the person that... I don't want to refer to it as was wore down, but I was the friend that was... Uh, that my friend had fell in love with me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see her like that. And we were four of us. There was four of us in a group. We hung out every single day. Uh, this was, you know, me and the two. And two, Remember last week when I talked about a girl that queefed on me? Oh, okay. She was your friend? Yes. Yeah, so this was the four of us. What, she was the friend that she you was, dated? No, 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 no. This was, she was dating. I was going to say, why don't we refer to her as the queef? And queef so, the queef. That's yeah. a decent nickname. No, this is, this is. The queefer. It sounds like this a superhero. high school girlfriend's mm-hmm. best friend, queef girl. Queef girl. Anyways, I don't know why. Uh, anyways, girl. so high school girlfriend uh-huh. fell in love with me before I fell in love with her. And we but were all best friends. Did? And I did. I did eventually. It took a long time. I I was not seeing her that way. Mm -hmm. And over time, I did. I did. Okay, but there wasn't the element of, like, you had another girlfriend at the time, and it wasn't the element of, like, like, questioning sexuality. Yeah, none of that. Yeah. 
Certainly far less complicated. Definitely. But still, you know, it's it's in a so similar how you, vein. How do you relate? Well, first I want to give my answer. Oh, my God. My answer so. is complicated because it's it's not a black and white issue. It's definitely not. I think my first reaction is you cannot torture yourself. You cannot torture yourself. If this person has been, you know, I, I get it. Everyone has their own problems. <laughs> David <laughs> almost just spilled his wine over all the expensive equipment. It's I fine. understand that everyone has their own problem, right? So you can empathize with your friend as much as you want. Like, yes, maybe he's struggling with something. Maybe he's going through something. And because of that, you want to forgive him putting you in this position. But you have to value yourself more than that. And you can't put the feelings of others above yours all of the time to your own detriment. Like, this is obviously something that's really hurtful to you. And it's wearing you down. And I can see in this video how heartbroken you are. You, you can't let that environment persist. You have to move away from it. And I'm not saying end the friendship in a fiery rage. But, you know, I would... If I were you, I would tell your friend how you feel. I'd be like, listen, uh, clearly this happened. We kind of talked about it, but not fully. I just want you to know I value your friendship. I care about you. I want your happiness. But I also need to value myself. And this is really hurtful to me. So for the time being, however long it takes me to get over this, I need to step away a little bit. Yeah. I need a little bit of space to pick myself back up and move on with my life. Because clearly, you know, right now you're in another place and it's hurtful to me. And I think you can do it in a nice way. That the door is open. That the friendship isn't ruined. The bridge isn't burned. But you're still respecting yourself enough to do what you have to do to heal. You know? And I feel bad because you say you have, you know, anxiety and this is the only person that you've been able to talk to. And that's so valuable. And I, I relate to that. But there are a lot of people in the world. And there is someone out there that you will meet next that you'll also be able to relate to. And it doesn't seem possible right now. But you'll find that person. And then you will have had this experience of opening up to someone that will help you in the future. Do you know? You're so good. I don't, I don't know, know how you I do just it. feel bad. You're amazing. That You're right on. And yeah, and it's hard. You're very right. I mean, it's hard to see that you're going to find that in someone else. You will. You really will. And Because he's not, he is not respecting you. No, he's definitely not. And, and to and see this situation like that, I think, is sort of important. I don't think you need to be furious at him. I, you know, no. the friendship is important. Um, yeah, and you never know. One day, whenever you've moved on with your life and found happiness elsewhere or, you know, within yourself. And he certainly has work to do as far he, as any yeah. form of sexuality and any form of, you know, definition of his own, what he wants. Mm -hmm. He clearly has to figure that out as well. So yeah. the space is good. It's really, really good. And, you know, maybe one day you'll be able to be in a stronger place where you can be friends with this guy again. Yeah. You know, everyone grows. You never know. Like right now, it's toxic to you, but that doesn't mean it will be forever. Yeah. But I wouldn't wait around. No, but it's it's sort of a, it's almost a breakup. It kind of is. And that's not easy. That's that's a tough. There's a lot of preparation that's going to probably go into mm -hmm. some form of a breakup conversation like that. Yeah. And that that will be hard, and he will find himself alone and. You know, his anxiety struggles, I think, will be still something that he, he's going to, you know, work with. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really is. And it's, it's so hard to see it in the moment because you're feeling so heartbroken. And you can see in this video how heartbroken he feels. And it's, it's so difficult for me in those situations when I feel that down to ever imagine another person like... No, there's not going to be another person that will come along that I can feel this way about. Like, this is it. This is my one chance. Without this person, I will be alone forever. And you truly feel that way. And it sounds so cliche and annoying, and I want to punch everyone in the throat that says this to me. But, like, time will help you. You yeah. have to, like, you have to give yourself this space and time to heal. 
And you will. And then one day you will meet somebody and you will start over. And maybe that person will have worked out their own shit in their life. They will know who they are. They will know what they want. And they will be emotionally available to you. That whole message of of really recognizing that the other person is sort of is in a way disrespecting you and that you aren't valuing yourself is such an important thing yeah. to to worry about and to 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 put effort into. Um, I I struggle with it. Um, I, I do struggle. too. Yeah, I've I've always struggled with it. Me too. Um, but it's true. Yeah, you can go and you can find the right things, and these experiences are are the lear- learning experiences that help you be able to even recognize what you want. You now figured out a huge key of what's important to you and a partner. Mm-hmm. I mean that you, I was talking to Ethan, but but Ethan now now has. And I was I was yeah no mm-hmm. you too. I was mm-hmming for Ethan. Yeah, <laughs> but even even me as well with any past relationships that I had been through, and any times that I wasn't prioritizing myself in those relationships that usually ended up in me complaining on a ski lift. Mm. Um, but, and then finding something that, that I appreciate and finding something that makes me feel like Ethan when he doesn't have, you know, his anxiety and when he feels calm, um, you know, that, mm. that form of internal peace is something that you can recognize in someone else and look for in someone else as well. Um, I think that's really great advice. What so. a powerful uh, <laughs> Ethan! Thank you, thank you yeah. for sending sending such a powerful message. Um, you know, today's episode was like it is clearly like a little less fun. Well, but it's important. It's so important. I mean, I haven't had that strong of an emotional reaction yet to questions we've gotten, and that one really like I I teared up listening yeah. to it because I just feel for him. You know, I I. I, I feel like I can relate a little bit too, but in the same way, I feel like I can't even compare it because it's not like th- there was a, you know, a, a confusion with sexuality involved. And I'm sure that's an entirely different element to it that I, like I said, I'm, I'm unqualified to speak to. But I, I can say that I've been in situations before where, um, you know, I really wanted something and I had strong feelings, but it wasn't good for me. And I had to make a choice to walk away from that. And it was really, really hard. And then later on down the line, like years later, I was able to kind of like be like friends, but only because I was like so far removed from it. I had completely moved on. I felt like healed. I looked back on it like, ha, you know, like that was a time in my life that I learned from. And I can't believe I was so wrapped up in it at the moment. But now I'm moved on and I'm happy and I know myself better and I respect myself better and I'm so happy I didn't put up with that. You yeah, know? you wouldn't have been happy. You'd, I wouldn't, wouldn't have been happy. And neither would I have in any of my relationships. They could have maybe sort of worked. Yeah. But I would have been lame. I would have been not the coolest me. So while my advice is to step away and give yourself some space, that doesn't necessarily mean that that person's out of your life forever. Correct. You know, it doesn't need to be this, like heartbreaking like almost death of a person like sometimes whenever I end a relationship or, or something like that happens it almost, it's a loss it yeah. is a form of a loss and it doesn't have to be entirely but in the moment you have to put yourself first and it's so hard because I mean I don't want to make any assumptions but I've had problems with self-worth and that makes it really difficult to put yourself first because you don't think you deserve it you know, yeah. and you feel like you'll never move on. You'll never find somebody that could possibly love you, you know, so you stick with these toxic situations because that's all you know. That's all you think you have. And like what he said, you, you know, resonated with me whenever he's like, this is the only person I've been able to open up to. Yep. Like that breaks my heart because that should not be the case. You know, there's got to be somebody. There's got to be somebody out there. And you have to realize that. <laughs> Even even in these hard moments, you have to understand that, like, one day you will be okay, even if it's on your own. And once you're fine on your own, then you're going to be able to really be a partner to someone else. <laughs> I love your brain. Yeah. Thanks, dude. And heart. It's all sort of one thing. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. No, that that's <laughs> that's really great advice. Ethan, thank you for, for bearing your 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 
purest emotions to us. We are now mm. the other person that he has, the other people that yeah, he has shared see? His, his whole. There you go. You just you're being, growing. You're growing your circle of people that you can op- open up to. Yeah. And honestly, like, good for you. These video submissions are hard. Even even the written questions are hard, but video, yeah, that takes a lot of courage, and you did it. So I do not believe for a second that you can't open up to someone else that's amazing, that won't lead you on, that will be there for you, and that is single. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get you a single guy that knows he wants what he wants in his life and is ready to go. You know? And you you know he said he's got opened up about dark things. Yeah. Everyone has dark things. You know? Every single person has dark shit. And you'll be able to help other people with their dark shit. Exactly. There's not just the one person that no. you can talk to. Hey, you talk to us. That's true. You know? You're you're killing it. There's a little bit more of this video. I don't know if Yeah, let's finish it. Let's There's 34 more seconds. Let's do, do it. I'm in. Let's get to conclusion. It hurts a lot. I don't want it to hurt. I feel terrible that it does hurt, but it does. Um, being around him. So, I guess my question is, what should I? What do you think I should do? And am I bad for? Am I bad for being in pain about this? Um. Thank you guys. I love you guys' podcast, and I hope you guys come to Denver. Bye. Ethan, we will party in Denver. We will party in Denver. Aww. And we would love to meet your bird. I want to hug you. I do too. We will hug him. I will hug him. I will hug him. We can we'll both group hug. group hug in Denver. Oh. Ethan, it is not bad to feel your feelings. No. Feel Re- your feelings. You are completely valid. Go write a song. <sighs> That's how you cope. That's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, you are valid to feel the way that you feel. You're not bad for feeling the way that you feel. No. Yeah, that that's... Ah, you got it, Ethan. Keep your chin up. Keep your head up. We're, we're, uh, we're right there with you. We're, we are your friends, and we are going to be we are gonna be near you. I'm so excited to see him. I'm so excited. <sighs> Ethan, he, I... He I, sent this question... Look, we get, I, I, I think he's going to be fine. It's so hard to see that right now, but Ethan, you're going to be fine. And you have friends that are talking to you right now through a video and a podcast in a garage <laughs> that's way too hot <laughs> in Los Angeles. But we're going we're gonna to get to see you really soon, and we're going to get to thank you in person for your question. And I promise you when we see you, you're going to be in a better place. Yeah. I promise it, you. Yeah. I mean, it'll be a couple months from now. So September it's something. a big, it's a big time difference. Like the amount of healing you can do in that amount of time. Trust oh my me. God. I've, I've turned so much around. Can we put him in the vlog and say, can we be like, yes! Ethan, how are you now? And he's going to be like, I'm fine. Oh. Thank you, Jacqueline, for your advice. It was so good. And David. David, you didn't have very good advice. No. But Jacqueline's <laughs> advice was like, a not like no, the my best. Love. You had amazing advice. Uh, no, you any, no, you. No, you. <sighs> We're ridiculous. Yeah, we really are. I hope that something was said that was helpful. Yeah. No, it was. It was beautiful. I hope so. I, I never really know, and I always worry about saying something wrong. Me too. You, you know, and, and this is really hard, so I hope that people can be understanding as we go through these things that, you know, some of it's uncharted territory for us. Yeah. And it is difficult to always say the right thing. And you never want to hurt anybody's feelings, but this is supposed to be unfiltered. It's so unfiltered. And, you know, we're, we're doing our very best. Damn it. <laughs> and we're, yeah, we're not qualified. We're just giving you advice like your best friend sitting on the couch with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like a professional, but I do No, care. you are a professional. You are a professional podcast. You, oh, oh, okay. This well, is. <laughs> I'm a freaking professional today. Yeah. You're a professional, professional, professional relationship, uh, love and relationship, intimacy expert. Mm. Wow. That's a long title, but I'll take it. Yeah. Professional wine drinker? No, not even. Those no. people are like, oh, this smells like a fresh summer breeze. You did You did <laughs> learn you like certain types of sweeter wines now. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> at Passover, we, had, we learned that she likes Manischewitz. 
Um, I don't know. It tasted like sugar. A little bit of alcohol with sugar, and I like that. Yeah, it was it was really cute. Mm-hmm. And we're actually, I think we're having Manish show it tomorrow night, so that should Ooh. be sort of fun. Exciting times. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I... <laughs> I, I'm excited that we got to cover this topic because it's definitely not something I would have thought of on my own. Um, and I appreciate the video submission. These submissions are so uh, touching yeah, and I, they're, they're really helpful. And honestly, like it's building a community like the Patreon uh, is building and that's so cool. And I think when we get up to a hundred patrons, we're going to launch a Facebook group and, and a discord server. And that's mm-hmm. really cool. And um, we're close. We're like over halfway there. You're over halfway mm-hmm. there. Whoa. <laughs> okay, copyright copyright no. oh, sorry no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kidding um, um well i think that we can maybe wrap up i think we can hopefully on, on a good note ethan we're gonna we're gonna see you in a couple of months and get an update are we gonna have a tour announced by next week when this podcast yeah well i don't i don't know we're gonna try we're doing our very best we're, doing we're planning best. a tour it's a lot of work but it's so we're much work doing our very, very best. it's so 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 much work <laughs> but we will go on tour and we, it will be announced someday Yes, <laughs> as soon as we can. And and that'll be really fun. We'll hang out with Ethan. We'll hang out with everybody who else is listening to this podcast. And uh, it'll it'll be exciting. Exciting times will be had by all. So hopefully we will see you guys there. Okay. Well, uh, so yeah, with that. Um, we're going to wrap do, it up. Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I don't. Did, anything, did I anything I forgot? I, th- I, no, I think we're I think, good. I think we covered everything. Shall tour. I? Tour's exciting. By the way, Jacqueline moved in. Ah. This is the first episode since Jacqueline actually moved in, and I'm so stoked. It's like a zoo right now, which is like beautiful and awesome because we wake up in the morning and we're both like, oh my gosh, our animals, look at them. They're looking at the window together. Oh, that's so cute. My kitty cat's in your doggy. Oh, it's so cool. Like, uh, we were worried about... We were worried about her. She was worried about her cats because I don't. I don't know how cats are. I'm like, yeah, we're going on tour. Bring the cats on tour. She's like, what? No, but like, yeah, the cats. Well, I look. I don't know these things. These They're the territorial first. animals. They like have to have a space that they get used to that they are comfortable in. They don't like going around and doing stuff. Like so, mine, at least, don't like. Especially Angel. She's terrified of anything. So we 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 put her cats in in little boxes, and uh, one was in a bag. <laughs> they were cat carriers. One was rough plastic and one was cloth. Anyway. Jesus. Yeah, we, so Jacqueline put one of her cats in the bag. It was like a, it was like a bag. It, it had, was a mesh cloth cat carrier. It was still like a gym bag, but it was see-through. <sighs> Anyways, we put her cat <laughs> and we and we moved you here and it's so exciting and it's really it's really cool. So thank you. To, cheers cheers to to cheers. A, a huge win yes. for us. It's and, been and it's been exciting. Our aminals are here, and where I was going with that aminals. was that was that her her kitties came to this new place and were probably scared, but they had one thing that they were comfortable with, and that thing was my pup. Nala. Nala was like, "Oh, what's up? Welcome to my house. I usually always go to your house, but welcome here." And then they all like got along really quickly, and the cats like they became, wanted to be near her. Yeah, she like, was like she was their comfort. Yeah. Which is so weird because they normally, well, at least Angel would normally run from her. Yeah, but, but Angel was like, oh, I know this. I know this. So I will be near dog. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's really, it's really, uh, yeah. it's really cool. Um, so thanks for moving in. It's an exciting uh, development in our, our, in our unfiltered love. Oh, big. <laughs> unfiltered love. <laughs> All right, we were wrapping right, up. We are, we're, we're rambling. Uh, Ethan, we will see you soon. Hopefully this made you feel a little bit better. Everybody else listening, we will also see you soon. Stay in touch. Um, and, uh, yeah. We'll see you next time. All right, goodbye. Goodbye.